As filmmakers, we're constantly watching movies to get inspiration and reference for how we want to approach a film that we're working on. And I think this is probably a movie that people are most often asking me about how it was shot uh, and what it was like working on this film. So in this video, we're gonna do a case study into the cinematography and making of Cartel Land. There's an imaginary line out there between right and wrong, good and evil. I believe what I am doing is good and what I'm standing up against is evil. It's the cartels. They're the ones terrorizing their own country and now they're starting to do it over here. What Esperar que vinieran por ti o que defenderte. Y ármense, únanse. The cartel scouts keep getting away. El gobierno no proporciona las garantías de seguridad que el pueblo necesita. Nos podemos armar. They're taking back what is theirs from the cartel. This way it should be done up here, too. Anybody touches me, drop them. You savvy? We're the lucky ones for now. Ustedes lo están viendo es porque yo ya dejé de existir. I had met Matthew Heineman, the director of Cartel Land, um, as an assistant when we were shooting Escape Fire, the fight to rescue American healthcare. And when Cartel Land first came to be, you know, it started as a small film, as most films do. And he sent me an article uh, in Rolling Stone about these vigilante groups in Arizona. And he said, you know, I, th I think I want to explore this and see if this is a, a, a film. You know, is there something here? And so would you want to come to Arizona with me and, and feel it out? So, you know, read the article, it was fascinating. And, and so obviously I said, yes, let's do it. You know, this film really started small and, and it stayed small through the, the making of it. Um, it wasn't until after that it, that it kind of had the, the success that it did. But, you know, this was a very small team of people making this movie in the field. It was the director, Matthew, it was myself shooting. Uh, both of us had cameras at all times. Uh, sometimes we had sound, oftentimes we didn't. And then when we were in Mexico, we, we had a producer and a fixer. So at most it was a team of four, um, and at minimum it was, it was just the two of us. What made the cinematography of this movie work was the fact that we had very little equipment with us. You know, we shot this on the Canon C300, and we had two lenses. Uh, we either had the 17 to 55 or the 24 to 105. And these are, these are still lenses. These are, these are small, they're lightweight, they're easy to carry. Um, and beyond that, it was just media and batteries. You know, rarely were we ever using a tripod. So we kept this incredibly stripped down because so much of this movie was, you know, in Arizona, it's going on incredibly long hikes into the desert, um, needing to carry all of that gear with you on top of water and food. You know, in a scene like this, we were spending the night up on the mountain. And so, you know, you don't want to be burdened down with a lot of gear. And I think so many people often think about when you're shooting a film and you want it to be cinematic, that you need to have all these options available to you of, of lenses and support and gimbals and drones and all these things. And it just simply isn't true. You know, it's, it's not the gear that's gonna make the movie, it's the approach uh, and, and, the, and the connectedness to the story that you have that's gonna do it. That's how you're gonna be able to communicate an idea 
um, and make it as cinematic as possible. So here's a scene that takes place in Oppo in Mexico that came very early in the making of the film. In fact, this scene was shot the first trip to Mexico. We were still trying to figure out, you know, how this was going to work. And so neither Matt or myself speak Spanish. Uh, and so we brought in a, a Spanish-speaking cinematographer, Ross McDonald, um, to shoot this. And so, again, to keep the crew size down, Matt and Ross uh, were shooting. Um, Matt had our producer, Miles Esty, with him as a translator, and then Ross was able to kind of work on his own. And then I was actually doing sound during this scene um, and floating between the two of them and getting that coverage. You know, oftentimes, you know, as a cinematographer, especially on uh, Matthew Heineman films, I'm also doing all of the sound, um, which I think is a, a, a great way, actually, to be able to draw you into the story and keep you focused. No me va a llevar. There were a lot of things happening and a lot of moving parts that were happening in different parts of the town. And so, you know, Matt would be following one part of the story and Ross would, would go in another part of the story. It's always listening, it's always paying attention, it's always looking for the things that can translate, you know, the feeling of what's evolving moment to moment to an audience who isn't there and hasn't experienced this before. Always keeping your eyes open for, for a face that says something, a gesture that says something. So much of Verite cinematography is about listening and following the action. As we first started making this film, the, the idea of danger and fear um, was a little different than how it ended up towards the end. You know, again, we were making a film in the beginning just about uh, these groups in Arizona. And, you know, while there's certainly danger involved in, in doing that, um, I think that, you know, mentally and physically for us was, was a great place to start because it ended up uh, not coming anywhere close to the experiences that we had in Mexico. But we were able to work our way kind of into that, into that experience. But one thing that, that ultimately happened throughout the course of this film is there's so much going on around you at any given point. Uh, there's so much stimulation. Um, while also needing to just focus and tell this story, because obviously any scene in this film is not going to happen again. You know, these are moments that you don't want to miss. And so that hyper focus of, is it exposed properly? Am I in focus? What's behind me? What's around me? Is you create, you know, the camera helps give you this tunnel vision that really does keep you focused and it, it helps bring kind of the, the fear and anxiety down quite a bit. Um, and you're just, you know, the adrenaline is keeping you going. And I think, again, that, that, that mental focus um, is important in being able to capture scenes of this, of this magnitude. So much of this film takes place at night. You know, as a documentary cinematographer, there's not much that you can do about that. Um, you know, very much so in this film, we're not lighting scenes, we're not even bringing lights with us. And so you kind of have to work with what you've got. But I think the other thing is, you know, to me, so much about what communicates kind of the, the visceral nature of being in the dark uh, while going through an experience like this is that noise brings in some of the texture. And so I was never afraid to embrace the noise that the camera's giving you. And so, you know, very much in scenes like this, it's pitch black, but I think that, that being able to expose it in a way that, that you're not overdoing it um, and it still feels the darkness, but you're still getting what you need. And the noise that comes through in that, to me, is a, is a big part of the story uh, and a big part of the shot. And so don't feel afraid you know, to, to embrace kind of those, those imperfections in what the camera can give you, because at the end of the day, that's, that's part of what it's like being there. Matthew likes to shoot all of his interviews looking right down the barrel of the lens. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, there's a lot of ways to overcomplicate that setup. Um, but funny enough, what we did for this by, again, not wanting to bring additional gear with us and, and being able to get interviews at any place in time was 
it's really as simple as sitting the person down and just asking them to look straight in the lens. I would sit to the side of the camera, uh, making sure that I'm never making eye contact with the subject. And then Matt would sit directly behind the camera so that as they are speaking, they are speaking to a person that is there without being able to see him. And a lot of people think that that would be incredibly uncomfortable for the people in front of the camera. But I think it's one of those things that Again, so much of the documentary filmmaking process is about creating your relationship and your connection and your trust with that person. And so as long as you have that and as long as you're respectful of that, then being able to get people to do something like talk into a lens um, without seeing your face is completely possible. But it's, a, it's, it's an effective way of doing it. And I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate that process. Well, there's so much that we could talk about with Cartel Land, but I hope that this gave you a little bit of an insight into our process and how we shot the film. So much of documentary cinematography is not about the gear that you're using and, and the crew sizes that you have, but about how you're listening to the story and how you're processing that information to turn it around and convey an idea to an audience who's, who's never been there and never heard of this story before. So I hope that that helped give you some ideas of, of how you might approach uh, a scene that you have in your film. And I hope that this was helpful. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope that this was insightful for you. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you can get updates about any future videos that are coming. And I look forward to sharing more with you. So thanks so much.